Hello and welcome back to the Simon Says Minigame Tutorial for M5 Part 4 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? So in this part, we are going to continue by creating a function that is going to be controlling these variables that we created earlier on in order to determine whether or not a button should be lit or unlit. But before we go ahead and do that, we're going to need a new variable that is going to contain all the different colors of buttons that we have available. And that is then going to be used in that function in order to pick the correct color of button that should be lit up next. So for that, we're going to create a new line. And then we're going to say buttons is equal to, and this is going to be a tuple. So we're going to write two round brackets like so. And then we're going to fill this with all the different colors. So we're going to say red, and blue and then green and yellow like so so now that we've done that we're going to continue by creating the function and for that we're going to go back up into our init python block right here and we're going to create this function underneath the last function right here so we're going to create a few of the lines underneath the last line like so and then go inwards once in the annotations and then we're going to say def and this function we're going to call light buttons like so and inside of this function we are going to be changing the values for some of the variables that we created earlier on and to do that we're going to need to make them into globals first and the first variable that we're going to make into a global is going to be the input ready variable so for that we're going to say global input ready like so and we're also going to need the correct picks variable so we're going to say global correct picks and also the current button index variable so we're going to say global current button index now since we want the function to be able to control the different button lit variables such as red button lit blue button lit and so on we're going to make these into globals as well so for that we're going to say global red button lit and global blue button lit and green button lit and then yellow button lit so now that we have done that we're going to continue by making sure that these variables that we have called red button lit blue button lit and so on are going to be set to true or false depending on the current pattern and for that we're going to create an if statement that is going to make sure that we are only setting one of these variables to true if we still have buttons in the current button pattern to light up so for that we're going to create a few lines, and then we're going to say if current button index is less than and then len and now we're going to get the length or the number of items that the current button pattern list has. So we're going to say current button pattern. And this current button index variable is going to be increasing in value every time the contents of this if statement runs. So every time we call this light buttons function, then we can check if this variable has a value that is less than the total size of the current button pattern. And if that is true, then inside of this if statement, we're going to make sure that we are lighting up the next button in the list. And to do that, we're going to create a new variable that is going to be local to this function. And this variable is going to contain the color of button that we want to light up next. So for that, we're going to say button lit, like so. And to pick the correct color that this variable should contain, we're going to look inside of the current button pattern list and pick the item from that list that resides in the index position of the current button index variable value. So for that, we're going to say buttons. And to pick a color from the buttons list, we're going to add two square brackets like so. And then we're going to refer to the current button pattern list. So we're going to say current button pattern. And then we're going to add two square brackets again after this. And then say instead of these, current button index 
like so. So if we imagine that the current button index variable currently has the value of 1, then that means that we are grabbing an item from the current button pattern list that has the index value 1. And this item might have the value 0, which means that this whole bit is going to give us the value 0. So then we are grabbing an item from the buttons list that resides at the index position of 0, which is the color red. So then button lit is going to be equal to the color red. So now we're going to compare this variable to see which color it is, and then we're going to set the corresponding button lit variable to true. So for that, we're going to create a new line, and then we're going to say if button lit is equal to, and then in two quotation marks, we're going to say red as the first color. And then inside of this if statement, we're going to say red button lit is equal to true. So now that we have set the red button lit to be true, we are going to set the other colors to be false so that they don't light up in the Simon Says screen at the same time as the red button lights up. So for that, we're going to say blue button lit is equal to false and green button lit is equal to false and yellow button lit is equal to false. So now that we have checked if the button lit variable is set to the color red, we're going to continue by checking for the other ones as well. And for that, we're going to go ahead and select this whole if statement and its content, and then press Control shift d on the keyboard, like so. And then we're just going to rename the if statement to say elif, and then swap the red color for blue, for example. And then we're just going to make sure that the variables inside of this if statement are going to have the correct values. So the red button lit should now be false instead of true, and the blue button lit should now be true instead. And then we'll continue with the other two colors as well. So we're going to duplicate this whole elif statement, and then change the blue to say green, and change the value for the blue button lit to say false instead. And then the one for green button lit should now say true instead. And then we'll do the last one. So we're going to check for yellow. And then we'll set the yellow button lit to true. And green button lit to false. Like so. So next we're going to make sure that this current button index variable is going to be increased by 1 every time this if statement runs. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to create a few of the lines underneath this last elif statement like so, and then go inwards once in the indentations, and then we're going to say current button index plus equals 1. So now every time this if statement runs, we're going to increase the current button index variable by 1. So now let's imagine that we are calling this function from somewhere in our script, then this function is going to run once, and runpy is going to check this if statement right here, and it's going to check if current button index, which is 0 as the initial value, is less than the length of the current button pattern. And the current button pattern list is going to have a different size depending on the difficulty that the user has chosen. And if they have chosen an easy difficulty, then this is going to be equal to 4. So in that case, it's going to say if 0 is less than 4, which it is, then it's going to continue and run this code that the if statement contains. At the top here, the button lit variable is going to be set to the color of the first button in the current button pattern. And if that happens to be the color red, then this first if statement here is going to run and set the red button lit variable to true and the other ones to false. Then at the bottom here, the current button index variable is going to increase by 1. So now instead of being 0, it's going to be 1. The next time we call this function, then RenPy is again going to do the same thing. It's going to check this if statement and see that the current button index is now 1. So it's going to say if 1 is less than 4. And then it's going to do the same thing as before with this inner content. Now we don't want to, of course, have to manually call this function every time we want to light up a certain amount of buttons, but we want this to happen automatically where the code decides how many times this function needs to run and then run it for that many times. And for that to work correctly, we're going to need to check if the correct picks variable 
that contains the amount of correct buttons that the user has gotten so far is equal to current button index. And if that is true, then we know that we have revealed the correct amount of buttons to show to the user so far. And in such a case, we're going to make sure that we're setting the input ready variable to true to allow the user to start pressing buttons. And by doing so, we're also going to make sure that this function is no longer going to automatically keep on running until after the user has finished pressing the correct buttons. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. And then before this last line, we're going to create a few of the lines. And then we're going to make sure that we are in the same indentation as these elif statements. And then we're going to say if correct picks is equal to current button index. And then inside of this if statement, as I said, we're going to set the input ready variable to true. So we're going to say input ready is equal to true. Now we also want to make sure that we are resetting the correct picks to zero because now the user has followed the pattern correctly up until this point. So for that, we're going to say correct picks is equal to zero. Now to make sure that these changes that we have done to these variables are going to be reflected correctly inside of our game, we're going to need to restart the interaction as well. So after this last line, we're going to say rempy.restart interaction, like so. Now the last thing we're going to do inside of this function is to create an else statement that is going to run in case this if statement is no longer true. And that would simply mean that we have now exhausted all of the buttons inside of the current button pattern list, which means that we have now revealed the entire pattern to the user. So now we just want to wait for the user to hopefully repeat the entire pattern correctly. So for that, we're going to create a new line underneath this last line right here. And then we're going to go inwards once in the annotations. And then we're going to say else. And then we're going to set the input ready variable to true. So we're going to say input ready is equal true. And then we'll make sure that we are restarting the interaction again. So we're going to say vampire dot restart interaction. So now that we have finished the contents of this function, we're going to continue by making sure that it is going to automatically and continuously run until the input ready variable is set to true. And for that, we're going to go back down into the someone says screen and create a timer displayable that is going to continuously run this function. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to scroll back down till we find the someone says screen right here. And in here, we're going to create a few of the lines underneath this last image button. And then go inwards once in the indentations, like so. And then we're going to say, if not input ready. And then instead of this if statement, we're going to create the timer. So we're going to say timer. And this timer is going to run every second. So we're going to write 1.0. And then we're going to say action. And since we want to call a function every second, we're going to say function and then name the function, which is light buttons. And then we just need to make sure that this timer is going to be continuously repeating. So we're going to say repeat true, like so. So now, as long as the input ready variable is not true, then we're going to continuously run this timer that is going to call the light buttons function. Now, the thing is with this code that we have so far is that we don't really have a way of turning a button off again after it has been lit. So if we were to run this game now to test to see what it looks like, we're going to notice that the first button in the pattern is going to light up, but then it's not going to turn itself off again and wait for user input. So to fix that, we're going to create another timer that is going to run every half second. And this timer is also going to call a function that we're going to call off buttons, which is simply going to make sure that the buttons are turned off. So we're going to create a new line and then we're going to say timer 0 0.5 and then action function and off buttons. And this one is also going to be repeated. So we're going to say repeat true like so. 
So now every second a button is going to be lit and then 0.5 seconds after that it's going to be turned off. So now that we have done that let's go ahead and create this off buttons function. So we're going to scroll back up here into the init python block and after this light buttons function we're going to create a few of the lines and then go inwards twice in the indentations like so and then we're going to say def off buttons and then we're going to make sure that we are making the different colored button lit variables into globals so that we can change them so for that we're going to say global red button lit and then the other ones as well so blue button lit and green button lit and yellow button lit like so and then we're going to say red button lit is equal to false to turn the red button off again and then we're going to do the same thing for the other ones so we're going to say blue button lit is equal to false and then green button lit is equal to false and yellow button lit is equal to false now before we go ahead and launch the game to see what this looks like so far we're going to scroll back down into the Simon Says screen right here and in here we just want to make sure that we are changing the auto property for the image buttons that have the lit version of the image because we don't really have a harvest date for this version so therefore we're just going to say idle instead like so and then we're going to do that for the rest of the image buttons that have the lit version so we're going to say idle there as well and then idle and idle like so now one problem with this if statement down here is that these two timers are of course only going to run as long as the input ready variable is not true but that also means that when we only have one button that is going to be shown to the user such as when they first launch the game then this timer that is going to turn off the button after it has been lit is not going to get time to run because immediately after the button has been lit the input ready variable is going to be set to true so to make sure that this is going to work correctly we are instead going to create another if statement that is going to check if any of these buttons are lit then we're going to run the timer that turns them off so for that we're going to create a new line underneath the first timer like so and then go inwards once in the indentations and then we're simply going to check each of these button lit variables to see if any of them are true so for that we're going to say if red button lit or blue button lit or green button lit or yellow button lit like so so if any of these buttons are lit then we're simply going to turn them off again so now to see if this is working correctly let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like so now that we have the game open and running again we're just going to press the play button straight away and then we could see that the red button seemed to have lit up and then turned itself off again so that does seem to be working correctly because that is the intended behavior the first button in the pattern should light up first and then wait for the user to click on it and then after the user has clicked on it it and the second button should light up again but now since we haven't coded any actions for these buttons when we click on them nothing is really going to happen so far but in the next video we're going to continue and make them functional so that is going to be it for this video and if you liked it please consider to press the like button and leave a comment down below to let me know and as always thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next video